Hey, it's me, Dustin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. Unfortunately, now is the time for the video about disinformation on Reddit, the front page of the internet. It's been documented by both the European Union and the United States of America that Russia, Iran, China are all spreading disinformation online about the coronavirus pandemic, which, to be clear, can kill you. If you don't know the right things about the pandemic, you can die. So why would they do that? This is the fourth video in a series on disinformation. We've already covered YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Okay, Reddit does not want disinformation on the platform. In fact, they're doing a ton to try to fight against it. But the question is, how do you fight disinformation without giving up what makes Reddit so powerful, a place to freely exchange ideas with other people anonymously? Today, we're gonna talk about this tension, and more importantly, how it affects you and I as Reddit users. To learn about this, let's go get smarter every day and talk to the experts. We're gonna to speak to Chris Slow, the Chief Technology Officer at Reddit, and then we're gonna to go to Renee DeResta at the Stanford Internet Observatory. We'll talk on the phone with John at the Oxford Internet Institute, and then Jeremy Blackburn at the iDrama Lab. It's a group of scientists and academics that use math and science to try to detect this stuff. All right, first off, let's go to actual Reddit headquarters, something I've always wanted to do. We're gonna meet Chris Slow, Chief Technology Officer, and get this conversation started. I guess let me start here. Yeah. Who controls Reddit? Somebody controls Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, good, that's, a good answer. that's a good answer. But I mean, Reddit is, it's the front page of the internet. Like you go to yeah. Reddit and like whatever's on that front page, it influences culture for that day. Okay. Um, I think the actual answer is like, Everybody who uses Reddit controls Reddit in some in some way. You want people to upvote or downvote. Yeah, it's a function of you know if the community likes that content. And so the, so the, yeah, the next level is the moderators. So every every community has its own set of moderators. Okay. And they enforce their own set of rules. And so okay. they get a chance to set the tone of their community. So they can take down anything they want directly. They can just remove it. Um, and they can set their rules to be as strict or as loose as they want to be. The underlying important unit is not the content or the user but the communities that are built on the platform. Is coordinated inauthentic behavior a problem on Reddit? Um, I mean, it's, it's definitely a problem we constantly work to prevent. Um, I, mean, I would say like, there will always be examples of things that hit the front page that sh potentially shouldn't be there. That's kind of like a nature of the platform, right? Because you know, you're dealing with a bunch of people, right? And so, um, you know, an you know, extreme example would be, yeah, clickbait is a thing. Like titles that are suggestive that'll get you to click through or like, you know. Um, but what we try to do is, there's two parts of it. One is users have an opportunity to reconsider their vote after seeing the content. Um, secondarily, and you know, they have the downvote available to them as a way to kind of like degrade any, any um, inauthentic like behavior that happens. The other side of it is like, you know, we put a lot of work over the last decade and change into maintaining a certain like sanctity of the vote. Um, you know, the, the joke I usually use is that um, we count every vote, but that doesn't mean that every vote counts, right? And so we have to be able to come up with, um, you know, based on, based on behaviors, knowing that there's some adversary on the far side who's trying to basically game our system, have a set of somewhat opaque ways to hide like what counts and what doesn't, but at the same time, make sure that we're not, you know, throwing the baby out with the bathwater, right? Like we, we do wanna have things that are popular manifest themselves as popular. But during that very early formative time, that really first couple of votes is what's really critical. Right. That's where there's a lot of scrutiny around making sure that, you know, there's not like a game going on where, you know, it's it's me and my 50,000 clones that are all coming from the same computer and the same IP address are counting towards mm -hmm. that vote. You can think of it as like this kind of a tiered system for how we deal with the way content appears on Reddit. Um, at least for like the, like the enforcement side of things or like the removal side of things. The, the last line of defense is us, like us as a, as a company. Okay. Um, you know, the admins, um, as we are referred to on the platform. Um, we, our job is to enforce like site-wide policy violations, like, you know, copyright violations, anything that violates our, our content policy, you know, harassment, spam, all, mm -hmm. that, all that great fun stuff. Mm -hmm. um, our appearing in a place is like the last line of defense. It's like the it's like you're sending the National Guard to clean up like a giant mess. Right? Okay, so like you're saying when Reddit employees get involved. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a rare thing is what you're saying. That's a relatively rare thing. Just a personal observation, Reddit seems to be way more hands-off when it comes to this stuff than other social media platforms, but it's also way more community focused. Renee DeResta has a ton of experience studying this information online. So I asked her what she thought about this community-driven approach. 
first, there's a, an interesting idea there, which is that the community should decide what kind of content it wants to tolerate, right? And um, and so you do see things like I think there's a subreddit where um, you can only post a picture of a cat, and if you post a picture of a dog, like you know, it's deleted and banned. And nobody goes in there and screams that they're being censored because they couldn't post the dog into the cat subreddit. So it's interesting in light of like the moderation challenges faced by like Twitter and Facebook, where there's this expectation that one moderation standard is is uh, is fit for the whole community. I do think Reddit is an interesting experiment in seeing how that much more hands-on moderation kind of activity works. And then also, when the community reports these weird accounts coming in, um, there is a little bit more of like, you know, you as a member of that community have a better sense of like where that uncanny valley is, where like the content's not quite right. The um, the person typing the account, like, you know, sorry, the person typing the comment gets it just a little bit wrong. They don't understand um, the community they're yeah, interacting with. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and so there is, like, I, I do believe that Reddit has a unique, um, that community-moderated kind of point of view um, for detecting anything from disinformation to harassment. At the same time, we do see these accounts get through, right? And so the question is also, what's their top-level strategy for managing and detecting and being proactive, recognizing that their, their platform is a target for state-sponsored actors. Is it enough to rely on community mods or is there also something in place to um, have a top-level view that's uh, doing a little bit more of the investigative type work that Facebook and Twitter are doing. So when speaking to Renee and Chris, we talked about upvote manipulation, downvote manipulation, brigading. There's all kinds of manipulation that can take place on Reddit, and those discussions are pretty long, so I'll leave them over on the second channel at some point. But for now, there was one little nugget that fell out of the conversation with Chris from Reddit that I think other Redditors might appreciate. One of the one of those um, size invariant things on Reddit has been that the, uh, the upvote to downvote ratio consistent over 14 years. I don't know what this even means. Seven to one. There's been seven upvotes consistently to every downvote cast on the site. That's interesting. I don't really, I don't get it, but it's a, it's a thing that's always happened. So I'm sitting here with Jeremy Blackburn. He's from Binghamton University in New York, the top public university in New York. And he runs this thing, or at least participates in this thing called the iDrama Lab, which I don't really understand what you are. Could you please explain the iDrama Lab for me? Yeah, sure. So iDrama Lab, we're a group of international scientists, and um, we specialize in getting a under having a large scale, a very wide and uh, high level view, holistic view of the internet as a whole. So uh, we don't just look at Twitter or just Reddit or just Facebook. We look at it all, and we focus really on understanding the connections between them, the hidden connections between them, and other chunks of the web. Um, this is really important. We think we're, you know, we're pretty good at it. Um, it's our niche, and uh, we do our job there. Got it. So let me just ask you this straight up. Then, is there some type of large-scale, coordinated, inauthentic activity on Reddit? Is that a thing? Yes, absolutely. Really? I, the internet has a long history of people pre pretending to be something they're not, uh, and the internet kind of enables that. So no, I don't. I don't. Don't want to say that everybody you see that's acting a little bit weird is is some kind of bad actor. There are people that are new to communities. They have to learn the rules. You know, maybe they are interested. They just haven't learned the culture yet. But it's not crazy to be uh, on the lookout for this stuff. It does happen. There are active uh, campaigns to to abuse social media and influence opinion. So what are you seeing? Uh, we're seeing that there's a lot of content going on right now, with, especially with the coronavirus. Unfortunately, we see that a lot of this stuff appears to be effective still. Um, it, there's not, we haven't noticed yet at least, any kind of new, particularly new strategies that are being used. We're still seeing kind of the same basic strategies that were two, three years ago because they still work, I guess. One thing I didn't get from the Reddit interview is they yeah. were kind of top, Chris was kind of top level he didn't really dive down and say, oh yeah, user SurfNinja385 mm -hmm. did this. Do you have like a specific example of a time when somebody's trying to manipulate Reddit? Yeah, there's a, so Reddit's actually put out their stuff. Um, there's a reddit.com slash wiki slash suspicious accounts. And on that site, uh, what they did, and, and actually I give them a lot of credit for doing this. Um, following the 2016 election, Reddit acknowledged 944 trolls that had been active on their platform. And it did a very detailed transparency report in early 2017, um, or maybe it was late 2017, but they did a really detailed transparency report where they actually go through and you can see that the user uh, Rubinger, for example, has a karma of uh, 99,400, it looks like. And Reddit, for a while, 
um, had left these accounts up. Um, and so you could actually kind of click in there and you could see what they were, who they, you know, where they were posting to. And that was where you could start to see that they were posting to some of the funny meme sites, some of the black community subreddits, um, some of the far right community subreddits. And so to their credit, Reddit did actually make this visible to the public. They kept them up there for quite some time. Which is an interesting choice. It is because Facebook took it all down. Even though they flagged the accounts, when I first heard that Reddit was leaving up access to both posts and comments from known Russian agents who were trying to manipulate us, I thought that was a really odd decision on Reddit's part. But when I went to the public link Reddit security provided of all the known troll accounts, I realized that this was actually valuable. It lets you study the context of the comments and the posts to understand how these disinformation campaigns work. At the time this particular troll operation was underway, the strategy seemed to be an attempt to use the hot button issues of the day in order to rile up Americans on both sides of any argument, all the while making sure to cycle in a good helping of low effort cute animal reposts to try to throw Reddit security and other users off the scent. At the time of these posts in 2015 and 2016, they clearly focused on racism and police issues. They would go from subreddit to subreddit hoping that it would explode and make everyone fight and create as many casualties as possible. The comments were interesting. They did one of two things. They were either camouflaged trying to convince other Redditors that they were real people, or they were inflammatory, hoping to nudge people towards hating each other. Although there were a few outlier accounts that seemed to be focused more on comments, if you look at the karma scores of the vast majority of these accounts, the post karma was on average 40 times larger than the comment karma. So an inflammatory post seemed to have been the weapon of choice. That being said, even though the comments seemed to appear less influential, let's take a moment and try to analyze them to understand the cumulative effect that they did have on the conversation. I'm on the phone with John from the Oxford Internet Institute, and he's been researching misinformation on Reddit, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about what he sees in the data. So you have a report in Robo Trolling, which is the magazine NATO Strategic Communications Center makes quarterly about online disinformation. You've got a graph down here that I was hoping you could explain to us. Uh, sure, I'll give it a try. So this was looking at what happens to the Reddit conversations after uh, some manipulation? So as you've got a Reddit thread sort of ticking along over time, um, you think of this left to right in each of those graphs, you know, another comment, another comment, another comment. Um, and then in the middle on the red dotted line, we have when a, a fake account, a Russian IRA troll account has made a comment, they've injected something into this, into this thread. And then what we have is the, the baseline, which is tracking along at zero, is essentially a control thread. So another thread that hasn't been manipulated. And then what we see in each of the three lines is how the manipulated conversation diverged. So what happened? Where was the change? Cognitive complexity, what does that mean? So a higher um, cognitive complexity score and acceptance that multiple viewpoints can be true, even if they're in opposition, whereas a low complexity score is singular, very single-minded, you know, I'm right, and there's nothing else that could possibly be true. Okay, an identity attack, I assume that means like people start attacking each other based on who they are, like gender, religion, things of that nature? Yeah, exactly, attacking somebody because of their, their identity. So a higher toxicity score suggests that it is more aggressive, more confrontational, and it's more likely to lead the recipient of the message to leave the conversation. And this is what I think is really interesting is that we see in all three of these measures, the conversations did change. Uh, so they became, on the left-hand graph, they became less diverse in the number of opinions. They became more, more polarized, single viewpoints. Um, in the middle, there was a sort of a short spike in the number of identity attacks, uh, although this did return to baseline afterwards. And then on the right, we see a sort of sustained rise in the level of toxicity in the conversation. So, so this is just one comment that was able to make the entire conversation diverge. Is that what I'm seeing here? Uh, yeah, so this is just at the one, the one comment level. So each one individual comment did create a measurable change in the nature of the conversation. So the magnitude of this change is small, but measurable. But if you scale this up to thousands of comments over the whole platform, then suddenly that starts to have a bigger impact. Wow. It's right, like this is data. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty clear. If you can make a 
a conversation into a two-sided thing instead of a three-sided or four-sided, whoever-sided thing, it becomes much easier to control it, right? If there's two very clearly opposing points of views, black and white, uh, now it's easier to control the narrative because people get locked into one of those points of views or the other. Using this same data provided by Reddit, Jeremy and the iDrama Lab team were able to create a report with fascinating implications. This graph shows weekly troll activity plotted over many years. This yellow line is what we're interested in because it's Russian troll activity on Reddit. What you can see here is that there was a bunch of activity by those accounts in the second half of 2015, and then the activity seems to go dormant, and then it creeps back up and spikes in the fall of 2016. The initial activity in 2015 seems to be karma farming. They would freeboot content from other places on the internet and post it for karma on Reddit. This post, for example, looks awfully familiar. And so does that pistol, by the way. Hmm. Weird. After this long period of what is thought to be karma farming to give the username more credibility, the troll activity seems to slow down for a while, and then when the moment is right, in this case right before the 2016 election, a percentage of these accounts surge into action and try to influence society. So it's pretty clear what's happening. They're creating the accounts and then they're grooming them to become effective social media weapons which can then be deployed at the exact moment when they might be the most effective. Think about where we are right now global pandemic, the early stages, we're coming up on an election, everybody's kind of tense at the moment. If you had these social media weapons, these accounts parked, when would you deploy them? What is a home run for a person or entity that would try to run a misinformation campaign on Reddit? What would be their goal? I think that the most achievable goal is just to cause chaos, to cause uh, polarization and to to keep people from going towards a common goal, to d deliberately drive people apart. So you see this type of uh, behavior elsewhere on Twitter. It's been very well explained that there are there were state-sponsored actors taking both sides of the same argument, right? They didn't have a particular goal. They just wanted to cause problems. Jeremy showed me something that made me realize we're only scratching the surface with this series. We're looking at individual platforms here, right? Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Reddit, they all have their own vulnerabilities. He showed me data and explained that these campaigns are coordinated attacks that span the whole internet. And it appears that Reddit is being used as a way to scale disinformation campaigns campaigns from smaller places on the internet up to more mainstream outlets. The military is aware that this is a big deal. They know it's a big deal. And nobody really has a map of the battlefield, a full map of the battlefield. Yes, Facebook has their, you know, their map of, you know, Facebook land and Twitter has their map of Twitter land. But, um, uh, you know, nobody knows what's going on in all um, other parts of the internet. And it's hard to win a war without a map. I don't know if it's ever been done. It's hard to win a war without a map. That's pretty good, dude. <laughs> so what would you say to the people on Reddit right now that they're using the platform and they're starting to question what they see? You know, they're seeing maybe, why is this kind of stuff at the top? And if they do identify some type of inauthentic or coordinated behavior, like what, what do we need to tell them to do? Report it, definitely. Mm -hmm. To no, click the report button. That's what the report button is for. Okay. Um, uh, we look at we look at reports. We look at uh, anything that you send to us. We do we do try to look at the more people who are reporting stuff and identifying things that look a little off. That's the thing that really helps us to find it and, and localize it. So that's a signal that you see. That's a signal we can use. And of course, like you know, the obvious question is like, what do we do about people who abuse the report button? Um, of course, people abuse the report button. Of course, we know how to deal with that. Um, okay. So I think you know, the broader the base of people who are reporting stuff, who tell, who think things look wrong, the more more signal we have. It goes back to the only way to scale up users is with more users. Like you know, we we can either have like a gigantic police force that um, and like a bunch of AI equipped cameras that watches everybody at all times. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Or we can let the you know we can let the neighborhood watch take over. I would rather live in a society that has a neighborhood watch rather than a bunch of cameras on every street pole. So Chris is talking about this neighborhood watch, but I was very surprised when I look at the data for myself and I realized that Reddit is very proactive when it comes to taking down bad actors on the platform. In the fourth quarter of last year, there were about five and a half million reports of potential content manipulation on Reddit by users. In that same period, Reddit removed almost 31 million pieces of content and sanctioned almost two million accounts for content manipulation. To be clear, that means Reddit has taken down roughly six times more content and accounts than have been reported. If Reddit overreacts, uh, if they you know, get too uh, authoritarian, authoritarian, if you will, uh, that can push people um, even further away from what we 
might consider mainstream or, or normalcy uh, type of stuff because then they feel persecuted and stuff like that. So Reddit has a difficult job. Um, you know, maybe they could do a better job, but uh, you know, I don't envy that job either. You're pretty happy with what they're doing. I, I don't know if I'm happy with it, but uh, I don't. I also don't know if I have a better, a better, easily implementable answer. Uh, there are definitely worse things they could be doing. So clearly, Reddit admins are proactively working to decrease the influence of bad actors on the platform. I find this interesting because when I started this study, I was under the impression that Reddit was too hands off but I'm starting to understand that it's more of a fine line that they have to walk. Also, and this is more personal, when I first started studying this stuff and I started seeing these disinformation campaigns around me, I think something bad happened to me. My reaction to this new reality was flat wrong. I started to irrationally see trolls everywhere. Oh, that person feels strongly and disagrees with me. Must be a troll. Oh, look, a pot shot at me in the comments. That's a troll. Ignore that person. And it started to feed this us versus them narrative from a different angle. The, the, the angle where I think anyone that disagrees with me must be a troll. At the risk of confusing you, I'm going to point this out. The troll's first play is to make you hate your online brother. The troll's second play is to make you think your online brother is a troll. If you go through the comment database, you can see trolls meta-joking about the existence of trolls. So what would you say to the normal user of Reddit? The, the person who goes there to find funny memes, uh, the person that, you know, their kids are sending them links from Reddit. What do you say to that person? Well, I think we don't want to create a feeling of paranoia, right? You, you don't want people to think like, Everybody I talk to on the internet is a pseudonymous, you know, troll operating out of some other country. But at the same time, I think there's like the need for a healthy skepticism. If somebody's posting stuff that really makes you feel riled up or really makes you feel um, strongly, uh, you know, kind of take the extra two seconds to to do the check, you know, where did this come from and why do I feel compelled to share it? Knowing that trolls appeal to emotion is very important because they are real. So here's what I'm gonna do. What if I were to assume everyone was real? Hear me out on this, not like a username to interact with or a comment to interact with, but like actual people. And I make that primary and I just go forward on the internet as if they're real. When I'm more kind and more loving, it seems to be more toxic to trolls. Think back to John's graphs. If I see someone trying to reduce the cognitive complexity of a conversation, I'm going to add nuance and try to expand the conversation. That's toxic to trolls. If I start to see identity attacks in a thread, I'm gonna call it out in a non-toxic way with kindness and love which is also toxic to trolls. If I de-escalate the rhetoric and try to make it less aggressive and less confrontational, that's toxic to trolls. And plus, this is how I want to interact with people in real life. Reddit has a very difficult job. They've got admins, mods, they have other tools in place to try to thwart the bad guys. But for me, the real battle is with me. Every interaction I have on Reddit is the one I can do something about. And I want to be a good guy. And I want to upvote people that are doing the same. So if I see you out there decreasing the toxicity or trying to expand the conversation, you're gonna have my upvote. I wanna say thank you. Thank you for watching this big series that I did on misinformation. We had YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and now Reddit. There was even a cyber warfare video before that. This was a challenge. And I wanna say thank you to the patrons for letting me mentally have the freedom to do this. People that support at patreon.com slash smarter every day, that frees me up. I don't feel like I'm tied to the algorithm. I can just explore the things that I genuinely want to explore and I thought this was an important topic. If you feel like this series has earned your subscription, I would greatly appreciate that. There's even a little notification bell. If you click that, you'll be notified when I upload. But if not, no big deal. If you want to discuss this, we'll be doing it over at r slash smarter every day. I'll leave links down below for all the references that we talked about. And other than that, I'm Destin. You're getting smarter every day. Thank you for the support. Have a good one. Bye.